In this video, we're going to talk about transferring and seizing the flexible single master operations roles in Active Directory. Now, the flexible single master operations roles or FISMO roles are critical to the proper operation of Active Directory, and therefore we want to make sure that they are always running properly in our environment. However, as the name sounds, a single master, you can only have one of these in either your forest or your domain. Therefore, we have to make sure we know that one is running, and if something is happening to that domain controller, we may want to move that to that role to a different domain controller so that role can continue to work properly. And so we will need to transfer those. It is also possible we may want to seize those roles. Uh, say, for instance, if a domain controller is offline, we may have to seize those. Uh, and so we're going to talk about how we can transfer them, both using a GUI or PowerShell commands, as well as how we might be able to seize those commands if something critical happens. So let's go ahead and check it out. First couple of roles we're going to look at are going to be based on the domain controller. Or, uh, sorry, within the domain. Uh, in order to do this through the graphical user interface, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, through server manager. I'm going to go up and choose tools and Active Directory users and computers. Now in a duck, what I want to do is I want to right click where it says the domain. And I can see I have an option right here for operations masters. You go ahead and click on that and we can see right now, for instance, my RID master or relative ID master uh, is currently DC1 and it's going to try to change it to DC1. Not quite right. PDC emulator, currently DC1. Infrastructure master, currently DC1 and trying to move it to DC1. So that's not quite right. We can see first off that all of our roles are on DC1 and we don't necessarily want that. We want those roles to be spread amongst many servers. And then we can also see that if we click the change button, it's gonna to try to change it from DC1 to DC1, which is not right either. So what we wanna do is close this operations masters window here. And I'm gonna come up to here where it says Active Directory Users and Computers. And I can see on the right-hand side there of the pop-up, it was actually saying that it's connected to DC1. I wanna change that to DC2. So if I right-click on this and I say Change Domain Controller, well, it sees right now I'm connected to DC1. I wanna change this to DC2. Uh, by the way, if its name is not showing up in here, you could actually type in the new name, for instance, if I wanted DC3. But I want DC2, so I'm going to go ahead and select that and click OK. Everything's going to look exactly the same since all the uh, since Active Directory is multi-master. However, this time if I right-click and I go to Operations Masters, this is about the only thing that will change by changing the server. Is now I can see yes, you're currently on DC1. Do you want to move that to DC2? And if that's so, well, let's go ahead and just click change. It says, hey, are you sure you want to move this? I'll say yes. And then it goes ahead and moves it on over to DC2. I can now see current is DC2. So let's go ahead and do that for the PDC emulator. Just click yes, and it moves over to DC2. And then also for the infrastructure master, click, and it's good. All right, so we went ahead and we moved the RID master, the infrastructure master, and the PDC emulator over to the uh, second domain controller. There's two other operations masters roles, uh, which is the domain naming master and the schema master. The domain naming master, I need to use a slightly different tool in order to get to. Uh, still under server manager, I go to tools, and this time I go to Active Directory Domains and Trusts. So Active Directory Domains and Trusts, there we go. Uh, see, again, it tells me I'm currently logged into DC1, so I wanna right click that, and I want to change my Active Directory Domain Controller to DC2. And now I right click on the domain, excuse me, now I right click on the Active Directory Domains and Trusts and go to Operations Masters. And just like before, we see the Domain Naming Master currently on DC1. If I wanted to go to DC2, I go ahead and click Change. And it moves it on over for me. Great! 
And then the very last role that I need to move over is the Schema Master. Now the Schema Master is a little bit more difficult to get into, uh, a couple of different requirements. For instance, I have to be in the member of the Schema Admins group, which I don't know if I am. Uh, let's see, Schema Admins. Uh, yes, yes, I am a member of the Schema Admin, so I can go ahead and move that over. Uh, however, before I get access to this, I do actually need to register a tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a command prompt. And I'm going to register, so reg svr32 schmm gmt.dll. So regserve32 schema management. schema management.dll. Once that's registered, now I can actually access the management console that will allow me to uh, use this tool. So I'm gonna go open a management console. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the tool. And the tool I'm looking for is the Active Directory Schema. Yes. And okay. And now that I have the Active Directory Schema, uh, let's see, I think I need to right click, change my domain controller. Again, move it over to DC2. And then Operations Masters, again, currently on DC1, and I want to move this to DC2. So I'll go ahead and say, okay. Great. Hey, that worked. Uh, it's not necessarily the easiest way to do it because of the fact that I had to keep moving around and looking through different tools in order to find the right tool to make this work. The alternative to this is actually using PowerShell. In PowerShell, there is a couple of, there is actually just one command that we have to use, which is called move ad uh, AD directory server operations master role. So along with a command, we say dash identity and we specify the computer that we want this to move to. So I'm going to say DC1. Since we just moved everything to DC2, let's go ahead and move some of them back to DC1. And then operations master role that I want to move. And it gives me a nice little drop down here. So I can go ahead and say domain naming master. Once I'm done with that, let's go ahead and just run that command. It says, do you want to move this? And I'll say yes. And it moved. Look at that. It was just that simple. Uh, with that being done, at this point, it is really simple to just simply change the domain naming master to something else, such as infrastructure master, PDC emulator, RID master, or the schema master. And then we can run these one at a time. Yes. 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 And yes. In order to move the roles back from DC2 onto DC1. So that was how we were able to properly transfer these roles. The idea with a tr proper transfer is both the source and the destination servers are online. Both are working well enough to be able to support the sending and receiving of the roles. Lastly, occasionally we might have to seize the roles. Maybe in this case, DC1 is where everything is. And I, DC1 is down for some reason. Maybe it has crashed, and so I want to move everything over to DC2. So let's go ahead and change our commands here. Let's move all these to DC2. But because DC1 is offline, I can't do a transfer. Well, that's actually not a problem with this command, because what I do is at the very end, I add in a dash force switch, which allows me to seize the role even if DC1 is offline. So now when I go ahead and run it, it says, hey, do you want to move this? And I say yes. And even if DC1 is offline, 
DC2 is able to claim that role authoritatively and tell everybody else in the organization that it now has the domain naming master. Do that with all the rest. Move infrastructure, move PTC, move RID, move schema. And now all the roles have been seized or forcibly moved to the second server. Now, one thing to know about forcibly moving these roles is it's not best practice. Uh, you definitely don't want to start moving roles from one server to another when the, sorry, forcibly seizing these roles from one server to another when the original server is online. Because of the way it does it, it just forcibly does it, uh, forcibly removes the role, and you may end up in a situation where you end up with two servers attempting to run the PTC emulator or RID master at the same time. 